From Illinois Public Media News, this is 217 Today. I'm Stephanie Mosqueda. It's Thursday, August 15th. Coming up, we'll learn more about the Democratic National Convention in Chicago that took place in 1968. That story in just a few minutes. But first, these headlines. Illinois Democrats are trying to excite people about down-ballot races as enthusiasm for the Harris Walls presidential ticket grows. Alex Segman has more. Illinois Democrats, are you ready for the fight? Governor J.B. Pritzker issued his standard call to action to an uproarious crowd of Democrats gathered before the annual Governor's Day at the Illinois State Fair. Comptroller Susanna Mendoza says people should get as excited about local races as they are about Kamala Harris. The top of the ticket, of course, helps the bottom of the ticket, but it doesn't help you when most issues are local and you don't vote for your local elected officials. State Representative Jay Hoffman, who lives near St. Louis, thinks the Harris Walls ticket will push more Democrats to vote in Southern Illinois. She, coming off the convention, is going to even raise the enthusiasm level even higher. Republicans have their day at the State Fair today. I'm Alex Dagman. Attorney Ben Crump is working with Sonia Mass's family on state legislation aimed at reforming the way law enforcement officers are hired. It would be called the Sonia Massey Bill. Mawa Iqbal reports. The bill would require agencies to report their officers' minor infractions, like DUIs and verbal harassment, to a state database. Currently, only an officer's felony and high-level misdemeanor convictions are reported. Crump says his goal with the bill is to make it not just be words on paper, but to make it meaningful for substantive change and help with the legacy of Sonia Massey. Crump says he hopes to bring these ideas to Vice President Kamala Harris and Illinois elected officials during the Democratic National Convention next week. I'm Mawa Iqbal. The park and golf course shuttered after a mine collapse in Alton will reopen later this week. Will Bauer reports that's after federal officials, the city, and the mine company determined the majority of the park to be safe. The park will reopen early Friday morning, and the golf course will take tee times for Saturday morning. In late June, a mine underneath the park collapsed, leaving a massive sinkhole 100 feet wide in the middle of a soccer field. Since then, the park and nearby golf course have been closed. Alton Mayor David Goins says he's excited for the reopening. This is a significant step for our community, allowing us to begin returning to the activities and routines that make Alton such a vibrant place to live. While the investigation to nail down the exact cause of the collapse continues, the soccer field engulfed by the sinkhole and one nearby baseball softball field will remain closed. In Alton, I'm Will Bauer. Junior Illini men's tennis player Kenta Miyoshi won the ITA National Summer Championship for a second consecutive year. In his sophomore year at Illinois, Miyoshi was awarded academic All-Big Ten and All-Big Ten second team. He finished last year with an overall record of 27-9 and nine in singles play. Additionally, former Illini tennis player Raheem Ram won a silver medal for doubles in this year's Olympic Games. Still to come, We'll learn more about the Democratic National Convention in Chicago that took place in 1968. That story is coming up next on 217 Today. Next time on The 21st Show, another round of layoffs at Western Illinois University. This time, some 90 faculty and staff are being let go. Plus, Illinois researchers say they've developed a new antibiotic meant to address the problem of drug-resistant bacteria. I'm Brian Mackey, and that's next time on The 21st Show. Join us. You're listening to 217 Today. I'm Stephanie Mosqueda. During the 1968 Democratic National Convention in Chicago, thousands of young people gathered to protest. Many were also there to document the events with cameras. Today, the footage allows a window into what that week was like on the ground. As Chicago prepares to again host the DNC, Courtney Kippers takes a look back at key moments from 68 with some people who were there. 
I meet Peter Kuttner in downtown's Grant Park on a recent afternoon. We're at the Alreda General John Alexander Logan Memorial Statue. General Logan is on a horse. Kuttner is in his 80s and lives in nearby Oak Park. But 56 years ago, he was among a thick swarm who gathered at this monument during the 1968 convention. You see this incredible mass of people. You can hardly see the statue. One guy climbed up on it, and he was up there uh, defending his position. Eventually, several protesters mounted the bronze horse, and pictures from that moment are among the most iconic images from that week. Kuttner was a young filmmaker there to capture it with his camera. So were members of an entity called the Film Group. Which is a group of filmmakers who were really known to do cinema verite films, to show us what was happening without telling us how to feel about it. That's Margie Newman with the Chicago Film Archive, a nonprofit that houses the Film Group's work. Ultimately, they turned some of their footage into four short documentaries. One of those films shows a tense moment on a downtown bridge. A woman driving several young people with protest signs pulls a car toward a line of armed National Guardsmen wearing gas masks. In a swirl of chaos, one of the soldiers points his weapon inside the car. Kuttner was also on the bridge with his camera for this moment, which felt ripe for escalation. Through the whole thing, that one guardsman is ready to shoot. Throughout that afternoon, tensions continued to steadily rise. And later that night, it reached a fever pitch in what has come to be known as the Battle of Michigan Avenue. Everybody back. The next day's Tribune called it a bloody battleground. The newspaper reported that 200 people were arrested, scores were hurt, and thousands were affected by tear gas. The film group captured footage from that violent evening. But it wasn't just scrappy filmmakers on the ground that night. The broadcast networks were also rolling. As they beamed the scene into living rooms across the country, demonstrators chanted this now famous phrase, the whole world is watching. Gordon Quinn, the Chicago filmmaker who founded Cartemquin Films, said that moment marked a shift in the history of protests in America. This was that time, I think, when people understood the power of the visual media and that there was that sense that these cameras were alive and that was going out. And it's like, what a brilliant slogan. The whole world is watching. While most of the clashes between police and protesters that week happened downtown and in Lincoln Park, the actual convention was happening miles south in Chicago's Canaryville neighborhood near the intersection of Halstead and 42nd Streets. Back in 1968, this was the site of the Chicago International Amphitheater. But it's kind of amazing. I mean, there's really no sign that it was ever here. It was torn down in 1999. And today, the spot is home to a large office building. But scenes from the convention floor and all that happened across Chicago that week live on. Courtney Kippers. WBEZ News. And finally, in your forecast, meteorologist Andrew Pritchard says it'll be mostly cloudy with showers and thunderstorms likely and a high of 80 degrees. That's it for today. 217 Today is produced by Stephanie Mosqueda. Reporting today contributed by Alex Segman, Mawa Iqbal, Will Bauer, Colin Highslope, and Courtney Kippers. Music by the Kilbourne Alley Blues Band. Reginald Hardwick is our news director. I'm Stephanie Mosqueda. 217 Today is a production of Illinois Public Media. Thanks for listening, stay safe, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.